What is he doing out there? How to get in here? Hold on, let me turn this compressor on. Okay. Where do I go? You like? You like my heat? This is my my driveway uh, heat source. So what are you doing, Caleb? you here to grace me with your presence. Actually, I've been here for a little while. You were paying me to drink coffee. The snow is coming, but I'm warm, working on my power wagon. Here, we need to shut the door. And then I'll show you from the inside. Okay, the door's shut. So, do I do a reintroduction? Uh, I don't know how to introduce it. Hey guys, Scanner Danner here, working in my driveway on a 1978 Dodge Power Wagon W150. Uh, this is a truck that I just purchased uh, a few weeks ago. Has never been on the road. Not filming everything I'm doing because this is kind of like therapy to me. Camera's off. I'm working outside next to my wood stove in my canopy. Honestly, this is at my leisure. So a little bit at a time, a couple hours here, a couple hours there. And uh, working at my brother's shop doesn't afford me that because he needs me in and out. He's got a three week backlog and yeah, so I'm working in my driveway and just like old school. Yeah, I just wanted to introduce the truck and talk about it with you guys for a minute. The first thing is we could call this a midlife crisis purchase. I don't know, maybe not. RV's gone, sold it. Motorcycle's gone, sold it. And I wanted to have one toy, at least. This is it. So history for me would be, I used to own a 1977 Dodge Power Wagon, W150, four wheel drive. Man, probably close to 30 years ago. And this picture you're looking at right here is of me and my wife. And this is probably 1993. Um, so it's very sen sentimental. Is that, the, did I say that right? Sen yep. Sentimental? Why, why does it sound funny when I say it? Because sentimental. Because I'm saying it purposefully, like pronouncing the T. Sentimental. I sentimental. Don't pronounce any T. No T's. Sentimental. sentimental. <laughs> That's how we talk in <laughs> Pittsburgh. Sentimental. <laughs> sentimental. Anyway, the truck is, um, you know, super valuable to me. And I've been looking for one for a really long time and they just don't come this clean. The truck is actually uh, a piece together truck. It, it, it had a body that came from Arizona. The frame came from another state. Uh, the axles were off of a three quarter ton. Um, so, it, you know, it's not a original power wagon, but it's so clean. The sheet metal is perfect. There is no rust. And, um, you know, when I saw it, I just handed the guy my money. I, I wasn't even going to negotiate. I just couldn't believe the shape that this was in. So this was way out in the sticks where I picked it up. Uh, pretty cool trip. And, and um, this is a, a picture of, of it um, pulling out of the, the shed where the guy kept it. And, and then we're kind of driving it up his yard. And I got it home, I pulled it off the trailer, moved it around a little bit. It's an open exhaust system right now, just headers and uh, a, about a two foot pipe coming off the header. So um, yeah, it's real loud, uh, but just listen to it for a second. It's pretty cool. Once I got it to a place where I could start working on it, uh, I lifted it and took a bunch of pictures, posted them online, and one of you uh, pointed out that there were lift blocks in the front on the leaf springs, which is a really bad idea. And I, I had no idea when I looked at it that there were blocks up front. It was a three inch block in the front 
and a three inch block in the back. There's a factory one that you're looking at here that sits below the three inch lift block. And uh, there's no problem in the rear for that, but up front, it's super dangerous. So the very first thing I did is research what type of lift kit I was gonna use. And I went with my friends at Rocky Mountain Suspension, who's the same company that I used for the lift kit on my Silverado. And in fact, I had the guy's contact info and I emailed him and, and he was awesome. Like back and forth emails right away. I got what I wanted. It's a Skyjacker four inch suspension lift that eliminates all blocks. So um, you're looking at some of the pictures in the front as I'm going, you, you see the two leaf springs laying next to each other. It was a three leaf that came out, a five leaf's going in, the block's coming out, and then I put a drop uh, pitman arm on and a adjustable drag link and uh, black max shocks and a drop sway bar bracket. Um, all I bought like as a kit. So Caleb, follow me. I wanna show everyone what I've done so far. Left front wheel, uh, first thing, new rotors, new wheel bearings. This is a full-time four-wheel drive. No, I'm not gonna do the conversion kit right now. I'm gonna leave it full-time. I do not plan on off-roading this. I do not plan on driving it long distances. I don't care about gas mileage, none of that. It's gonna stay full-time four-wheel drive, at least for now. New calipers, pads. This is the drop, uh, or the drop um, pitman arm. Unfortunately, with this year, the pitman arm was too big. I have a picture here where I'm holding it in my hand and you can see them side by side, the factory one and the aftermarket one. I ha actually had to shave the sides of it, um, which is not a problem because it's still as thick as the factory one and uh, it fit perfectly after that. Drop pitman arm, adjustable drag link. You see how nice and, and straight that is. You know, when you put a suspension lift kit on, that drag link sits like that and real steep angles on these joints, which isn't good. Um, the drop sway bar bracket keeps that nice and level. New leaf spring, U-bolts, black max shocks. That's the, that's the left front. Check out the exhaust pipe. There's my exhaust. That's it. It ends right there. Uh, I didn't realize it was right there. <laughs> yeah, so headers, <laughs> headers right here that ends right there. So it's pretty freaking loud. Uh, let's come over here. That's right front. Nothing special on the right front. Same kind of thing. Um, new rotors, wheel bearings, caliper, um, new leaf spring, you know, your black max shock. The hood is missing. It's the only thing that's not painted yet. It's a primer still, I gotta bolt that up, get it painted. But this is a 413 wedge out of a 72 truck. Now I don't know what kind of truck, he wasn't sure either. We think maybe a motorhome, but it's a 413. Um, I'm not sure all the specs of the engine. He sent me some stuff. I know it says 440 on the, on the air cleaner, but it's not a 440, it's a 413. Manual transmission, four speed. The gears, it's a 410 gear ratio. So 410s, it's actually 409 in the front and 410 in the rear, which I thought was strange. I don't know, but it's 410 gears, four speed, 413 wedge. I'm, I'm super excited about being able to drive this with these huge 35 inch tires and still have a lot of low end torque and pull. Uh, although I don't plan on doing any off-roading this is gonna be my baby. I'm working on the rear today, doing rear shoes, rear wheel, um, wheel cylinders, hardware and all that. Um, you see my new springs back here with no blocks. This is right on the axle. It's a wedge piece right here at the bottom. So that little wedge that's on there uh, is actually part of the leaf spring. You remove the factory blocks, this gets installed, that brings your pinion up just a little bit. Nothing special over here on the left side, same as the right. Um, you see that I'm working on it now and putting new e-brake cables on. This wheel cylinder is new. Um, he just changed it not long ago. I'm gonna change the other one and uh, I'll change the parking brake cables and have that all working good. And, and um, I'm getting pretty close to its initial test drive. Interior, spotless too. Perfect sheet metal. A lot of things that I need to finish in here. Like I said, some electrical stuff. It didn't have a windshield when I got it. So special thanks to Safe Light, who I used to put the windshield in. They had a guy come, I had my canopy set up and get it warm and I actually helped him. It took us about two hours to get that windshield in. It was not fun. And then I installed the rear window. That was out of it too. Uh, that was not a problem. The seats that are on this are actually from a 
Gen 3 Dodge, I believe. I believe they're from a 2005 or 2006. They're sitting on the original frame, but I am looking for buckets on this, and here's why. Check this out. You sit up too high. Now, maybe I get used to it and deal with it, but my head shouldn't be this close. I shouldn't be sitting up this high, and I'm not sure that I like it. I should be down lower, and I don't really have an option. This one I can drop a little bit. That one's on a track, and I can't. I don't know. So maybe looking for some seats. So yeah, I don't know. We're just gonna bring you guys along for the ride on occasion when we're doing things to it. Um, like I said, this is just an introduction to the power wagon and you know, call it a midlife crisis or just because it's not a midlife crisis. I've wanted one of these things for like 30 years. I should have never sold my original one. I'm still with the same woman. Love her to death. She's excited about it too and uh, we're excited to bring you guys along with us on this journey and i'm excited to introduce this to my dodge power wagon community friends on facebook i'm part of like seven different groups now caleb <laughs> each one of them has like you know 10,000 18,000 7,000 members i'm just excited to have it we look forward to uh hearing your thoughts and and um eventually eventually we're gonna put the Macho Power Wagon stripes on this. I actually ordered them already, the decals that go on the sides. Decal. And uh, decal? Decal. Decal, yeah. whatever. They're vinyl, and in fact, you and I could maybe do it. Maybe we'll film it and, and, and show people how not to do it. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so in introduction of the Power Wagon, guys. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll be bringing you guys some more coming soon on this truck. Uh, Happy New Year, by the way. Almost heaven. West Virginia. All right, Caleb. Q, Jake, and me and Bo on our last trip into West Virginia. Right? Yeah. Who says cameraman Caleb is a singer in the family? the camera shut off when we were pulling it up on there but we couldn't get the straps on the tires were too big had to put two of the older ones on it but we ready to go well, that took a lot longer than I hoped not much I'm gonna be able to show you guys it's getting dark on me but we are trailering feels good you see it in the mirror We are in the freaking sticks, man. Perfect time, the sun just came out. She's so pretty.